In recent months, I've been laying out a bold, forward-looking vision for what we will do when we become the 47th President of the United States. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It would have never happened. That war would have... I spoke to Putin about it. There was no chance that he would have gone in with me as president. And there was no chance that President Xi of China would have gone into Taiwan. I was the only president in decades who didn't start a war. You know that. Everyone said, oh, he's going to start a war. because." because they said I had that personality to start a war. They remember that? Oh, we can't vote for him. He's going to start a war. No, I used my personality that we didn't have to have wars. And I got out of wars, including knocking the hell out of ISIS, took over 100% of the ISIS caliphate. 100%. I took over 99% of the ISIS caliphate. I said, all right, we're going home. Let's get our great soldiers, we're bringing them home. And the media starts saying, well, why not a hundred? I said, you know what? We better finish it off because uh, they'll say I left early and we knocked the hell out of them. That was the end of that. We took over a hundred percent. We came home. But now I understand they're rebuilding again because they have no respect for our country. Standing before you today, I am the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III. I promise. It's not going to be a World War III. And very sadly, there's never been talk like what you're hearing now, because this guy doesn't have a clue how to speak. He's too tough when he should be soft. He's too soft when he should be tough. He says things that are so bad, provokes, and then shows weakness. He, it's the craziest thing. He says just the opposite of what you have to say. I know Putin very well. I know Xi very well. I know Kim Jong-un. If I didn't take over from Obama. If he had another year, you would have had a nuclear war with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. You would have had a nuclear war. Then when I got along with him, everyone hated, the fake news hated that I got along. He gets along. Isn't it a good thing to get along with a guy with 5,000 nuclear weapons? That's okay. But I did get along with him. I got along with a lot of people that uh, people are surprised, really surprised. That's why we had no wars and they would have never gone in. And it's so, sh all those people dead in Ukraine, far more than you think, far more than they report these phony numbers where a city is blown up, buildings all crushed to the ground, there's nothing standing, and they say nobody was killed, two people were hurt. Hundreds of people, thousands of people were killed. These numbers are far greater and far worse than you hear. When I get back into the Oval Office, we will totally obliterate the deep state. We will. We will establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to declassify and publish all documents on deep state spying, censorship, and corruption. By the way, they spied on my campaign. They got caught. Can you imagine if we, let's take Barack Hussein Obama, let's say we spied on his campaign, you got caught. What do you think would happen? You think it would just be some stories in only a few newspapers, because most of them don't even want to write it. It would have been, they would have brought back the electric chair. That's what they would have done. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Unequal justice. And I will require every federal employee to pass a new civil service test. How about the president? Let's start with the president. Demonstrating an understanding of our Constitution. To stop the local Marxist prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting conservatives. On day one of my new administration, I will direct the DOJ to investigate every radical district attorney and attorney general in America for their illegal, racist, in reverse enforcement of the law. I will quickly restore the most secure border in U.S. history, just as we had three years ago. We had the strongest, most powerful, most secure border in the history of our country. Three years ago, we had the most secure. We built hundreds of miles of wall. It worked, by the way. Then we were, we were going to do 200 more miles of wall in certain areas where we could see it was a little weaker than 
We wanted it. We started that. Could have been finished in three weeks if he did it. We had the stuff ordered. He took it away and hid it so that Texas and Arizona couldn't use it. And that's what I said. I guess they really do want open borders, and they actually want open borders, and nobody understands why. Why do you want to have people from prisons? Why do they want that? Why do you want people from prisons and mental institutions and insane asylums? That's a step above. That's silence of the lamb type, okay? Why do we want these people in our country? Why are we allowing them? And you know, you have to see these other countries. They are, I mean, they've never had it so good. Their prisons are emptied out into the US. They have no more costs. They don't want to take care of these people for 70 years, which is what you could have. I mean, they have this MS-13. You saw what happened yesterday with this killer, this thug, he was an MS-13. The level of violence, they called it demonic, demonic. The level of violence is incredible. We have become a dumping ground for the entire world. The money they saved, no prisons, no mental institutions. There was a story recently about a psychologist or psychiatrist, but a psychologist who worked in mental wards in South America. And he said, I worked 24, a good man, he worked 24 hours a day taking care of very mentally ill people. And he was sitting there reading a newspaper and they asked him, uh, what, what's he doing? He said, I have no more work. The people have all been let go into the United States. Can you believe this is what we're doing? How stupid are we? Do what, this is what we're doing. And this you pay for. I mean, sure, we can get a lot of them out, but this is what we're paying for. And the crime that you have not seen anything. Wait till you see this. But he said they've let him go in the United States. But this is not true with the three or four countries that we think of, Honduras and Mexico, El Salvador. This isn't just that little area. This is all over the world they're letting them in, from all over the world. They're coming in, they're coming through the southern border, and we had it stopped up. One of the very first bills I signed will be for a massive increase in Border Patrol and colossal increase in the number of ICE <laughs> deportation officers. We're going to follow the Eisenhower model. People don't realize it with Eisenhower. He was very tough on illegal immigration. A lot of people don't realize that. He was really tough on illegal immigration. We will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. And they'll take them back, too. You know that story. They weren't taking them back. And I said, good, if they don't take it, they weren't taking them back for decades. And the generals came up to me, sure, they won't take them back, sir. And I said, well, uh, do we give them any money, like any kind of subsidies or anything? Yes, sir, I'd like to find out. So it comes back $750 million. Yes, 750. So I said, listen, the three countries. I said, no more money for them starting this afternoon at 5 o'clock. The next morning, I got three calls from three presidents of three countries. Nice people. They're smart. I don't hold it against them. They got away with it for years. They put airplanes on the runways when we're flying in with prisoners or MS-13 people that are you don't want in this country. Believe me, these are vicious, vicious, the most violent gang in the world, probably, almost definitely. And they put airplanes so you couldn't land the plane. So I said, uh, how much 750? I said, here's what we're doing. Immediately, you're going to stop payment of all money going to these countries. You're going to stop payment now. Next day, I get three calls. The presidents of those countries, separate calls, totally. Sir, I understand there's a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah. We want your MS-13 killers that you sent over here. We want them back. And we want everybody to go back to your country. We want them. We're going to bring them back. Uh, sir, uh, we'd be honored to take MS-13 back. We think they're lovely people. Uh, what seems to be the problem? No, no, we would love to take them back. Immediately opened up. Nobody has seen that for 25 years. It took me one night. We would be honored. It would be a great honor to bring back MS-13 so they can kill our people instead of yours. No, it's terrible. The people that run our country are stupid people. I will ask every state and federal agency to identify every known or suspected gang member in America. And by the way, our police are incredible. Our firemen are incredible. Our police are incredible. And you know what? They know the bad ones. They are, they're in the cities. These cities, these Democrat-run cities are going to hell. The whole world is watching. 
But these police are incredible. They know the bad ones, but they don't want to lose their pension. They don't want to lose their wife or their husband. They don't want to lose their home. So they're told to stand back, but they know every bad one. They know everything about it. But I'll ask every state and federal agency to identify every known or suspected gang member in America and every one of them that is here illegally. The police know every one of them. We'll pick them up and we'll send them back home where they came from. They'll be out of here. And I will restore my travel ban to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. You saw what happened. Four years. Four years we went. Four years. You saw that, right? We were very tough on that. We don't want our buildings blown up. We don't want to have problems. The Biden border crisis is also a drug and fentanyl crisis and a human trafficking crisis like never before, mostly with women, very sadly, mostly with women. And it's uh, now at the number is 12 times what it was three years ago, 12 times. We had it really down. We were so tough on that, what they do with women and two women. Under my administration, we reduced drug overdose deaths in New Hampshire by 18 percent. 18. We had it 15. Then we had it 18. And our first lady worked very hard on that, I will tell you. She worked very hard on that. And instead of being down under Biden, as you know, and your police and firemen do an incredible job, you have a real big drug problem in New Hampshire, incredible, almost worse than anybody, relatively spent. That's what the governor should focus on, not running for president where he's at less than 1%. That's what he should focus on. But you have a real problem here. And uh, I have to tell you, your police and your firemen, I, I spent time with them and they took me around one day and the job they do on saving people, a lot, of the, a lot of the job they do is saving people that have overdosed. It's incredible. The drug cartels are waging war in America and it's time that America is going to wage war. That's what we're going to do. We're going to wage war on the cartels. We're being invaded. Our country is being invaded and destroyed. I will knock out the cartels just as we destroyed and knocked out the ISIS caliphate. The ISIS caliphate is tougher. I was told you couldn't do it for, it would take three to four years to do it. And sir, I don't think we could do it at all. I did it in three weeks. I knocked them out in three weeks. We have great generals. I want, not the guys on television that, that leave Afghanistan before they take out our equipment and our American citizens, where we lost 13 great people. And nobody ever says this, where many soldiers were just obliterated. Their arms, their legs, their face obliterated because of people that didn't know how to do their job. And why aren't these people fired? Why aren't they fired? And I will ask Congress to pass legislation ensuring that drug dealers, drug kingpins, and human traffickers receive the death penalty, because it's the only way you're going to stop it. <laughs> to combat the scourge of homelessness that is plaguing Democrat-run cities such as Manchester, I will use every possible authority to get the homeless off the streets immediately. It's so bad, it's so sad. And you know, you have great hearts, especially the people of New Hampshire. And you know, you don't want to even talk about it. You don't want to say, gee, there's 15 people laying in front of my building. You know, you, you feel badly about it, but you got you to gotta do something. For a small fraction of what we spend in Ukraine, we could take every single homeless veteran in America and take care of them. Likewise, with all the money, we will say by ending mass unskilled migration. That's what it is, mass unskilled. You see where in California now, they're giving them medical care, education. They're getting treated better than our veterans are treated. And you know, when they see that, they all come. They say, oh, you mean you're gonna give us free medical? Can you, this is not even believe. In California, free, and other places, free medical, education, the classrooms, you have people that can't even speak English and they're sitting all over the classroom. It's killing our country. But we will have a huge dividend to address the homeless crisis in our own country. We're going to save a tremendous amount of money. We're going to take care of them. We will get the homeless into tent cities, shelters, rehab, and mental institutions, and we'll get them off the streets of our cities. And living like that is no good for them, the homeless. 
And it's no good for the people that have to make our cities great again. You can't make your cities great when you have thousands of people laying all over the streets. To uphold our Second Amendment, I will ask Congress to put a bill on my desk delivering national concealed carry reciprocity. And I will immediately restore free speech in America. We've lost our free speech. And we've lost, we've lost our press. We've lost our media. It's so sad what happens to them. They don't, need, they don't report. It's not even what they report. They don't report. They didn't report the Biden stuff. They knew about it. They had the 51 intelligence agents. You saw that? Where they said, yeah, it's Russian disinformation. We don't have to report it. These are corrupt people. This is this. And everybody knew that wasn't true. And we will take care of our amazing veterans. And we did it, you know, for four years. We had a 92% rating at the VA, at the VET. 92%. We did a great job. It's the highest rating by far, by far, that they've ever had. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. I will also support parents' rights. Can you believe I have to say that? Parents rights. Can, you, can you believe I'm saying I will support parents' rights? Can you imagine 15 years ago saying, I will support parents' rights? So people would look at you, they'd say, this guy's crazy, parents' rights, of course. Who wouldn't support that? There are people that don't want the parents to have any rights, including the direct election of school principals by the parents, so you can get people that you want. If any principal is not getting the job done, the parents should be able to vote and fire him, get him out, get somebody that will get it done. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mass mandate. Crazy. We did a great job, but we didn't mandate anything. The Democrat governors would run their states, and generally they did those mandates, and they were disasters. And a lot of Republicans, a lot of them, uh, they really did it right, Republican governors, when you look at what happened. And I will tell you another thing that people can't even believe. I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? No, did you ever hear of anything like that? I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. And this is what we must do to save our country from destruction. 2024 is the final battle. Uh, if we don't take it over, we're not going to have a country anymore. I want to be positive. I'm just telling you, we're not going to, if we allow them to cheat, because it's the only way they're going to win the election, if we allow them to cheat again, you're not going to have a country. If you put me back in the White House, the reign of corrupt Washington establishment will be over, and America will be a free nation once again. With your support in this election, we are going to complete the mission. We are going to finish what we started. We did so much. We rebuilt our military so much. But we have things to finish. Stand with me, and together we will defeat the globalists, the Marxists, communists, and the rhinos. And we will also defeat the fake news media, because they're in on the act. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. And we will restore the American Republic as the strongest, freest, and most powerful nation the world has ever known. We're going to get ourselves back there, and we're going to get it fast. They know me very well. They're not looking forward to having this happen. 
but they'll live with it. Actually, we got along with them pretty well. There were certain assets also. You know, other countries need a strong America, not just us. Other countries need a strong America. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. Our banks are failing. Russia has joined with China. Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is collapsing and the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard. Can you believe this? And that will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years if we lose the dollar. There's a really good chance that we will, but it won't happen with me, not even a small chance. Just like Russia would never have invaded Ukraine, like China would not have even thought about raiding Taiwan. Wouldn't have happened. They understood. They understood. Can't do that. I used to say that if you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. But now I say if you took the 10 worst presidents, because I really believe that, if you took the 10 worst presidents and added them up, they would not have done to our nation what this man and what this administration has done. And by the way, they're going to, after this speech, they're going to be coming after me big time. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And that's what's happening. I hate to say it. I, it makes you sick to say it. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. And we can't let that happen. With all of this being said, and with a very, very dark cloud hanging over our country, I have no doubt that we will together win the presidential election of 2024 and make America great again. We're going to do it. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you.